In celebration of summer, we are featuring the top 10 episodes of 40 Thrive ever. Next up, number two. You're listening to the 40 Thrive Podcast, the show created for women 40 and beyond, ready to shake things up. And now, your host, Jackie McDougall. Welcome back to another episode of the 40 Thrive Podcast. We've got a super helpful episode today. It is our ultimate skincare guide for women over 40. That's right. We've talked about it in the group. I have been asked countless times by women over 40, do you know someone who has all the answers for skincare, whether it's to address rosacea after menopause or dark spots? We all have something going on with our skin. And so I've got an expert here today you are going to love. Now, in an upcoming episode, I'll be talking to a dermatologist about all of the things we should be looking for when it comes to skin cancer and things like that. But today's episode is all about making our skin feel and look the very best. Now, before we get started, have you subscribed yet to the podcast? If you have a phone or a tablet, this is the easiest way to listen to the 40 Thrive podcast. You could use Apple Podcasts or Spotify, iHeartRadio, or just download your favorite podcast app. When you subscribe to the 40 Thrive Podcast, you never have to search for it again. It just automatically shows up in your podcast app. So subscribe to the podcast today. Of course, you can also find all of the episodes online at 40thrive.com forward slash podcast for those of you who like to go old school. All right, if you missed last week's episode, I want to invite you to contribute to an upcoming episode. In the coming weeks, actually in seven weeks, we'll be celebrating episode 40 of the 40 Thrive podcast. To do that, I've invited 40 Thrive listeners in our private Facebook group to share their thoughts on one of the first 40 episodes and how it maybe helped them or taught them or they just felt connected to it. On this upcoming 40th episode, I'll be featuring 10 listeners sharing their feedback on the particulars, and I have a few spots left. So if you've benefited from the 40 Thrive podcast and would like to be featured, join the 40 Thrive Facebook group or email me at hello at 40 Thrive. I would love to feature you on this upcoming episode. So let's get into this episode. It is so jam-packed with amazing information. The show notes have all of the links to everything that my guest mentions. So make sure you check those out. So Kathleen Sabados is a licensed esthetician, makeup artist, and Pilates instructor. She's been an esthetician for 23 years and involved in the fitness industry for even longer. Kathleen takes great pride and pleasure in helping her clients look and feel their very best. With the proper products, skincare routine, and fitness program, Kathleen believes Everyone can achieve this goal at any age. She continues to stay on the cutting edge of new technology and skincare treatments, constantly evolving her service offerings. She feels very lucky to have cultivated such a fulfilling career in skincare and is extremely thankful for her fantastic and loyal clientele. I am so excited for you to meet this woman. She is a powerhouse. So let's just get into it. My conversation with Kathleen Sabados. Kathleen, welcome to the 40 Thrive Podcast. Thank you, Jackie. I'm happy to be here. I remember the first time we met and I pointed out how wrinkly my chest had gotten and that it was bothering me. And you said, oh, yeah, I had that. And I see you. You look amazing. And so I knew exactly who I needed to go to because you know my problems. (laughs) Ah, thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm going through here. <laughs> and so thank you for being on the show. I recently reached out on the 40 Thrive Facebook group and asked women if they could wave a magic wand, what would they do? What would they fix? So I've got some things we'll talk about today. Perfect. But before we do that, I want to go back and talk about your journey to where you are now. How long have you been in this industry? I've been an esthetician for over 20 years. I've been in the skincare industry. 40 years I've been <laughs> wow, in the industry. Wow, wow. Yeah. yeah. What and, did you do before you were an um, esthetician? I was in fitness, mm-hmm. and um, my family actually owned sporting goods manufacturing stores. So, Ooh. But I had to wait my turn to do what I wanted to do all the way. So 20 years. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you were... I did, was a makeup artist okay. for many, many years while my family owned a business because I could do that. 
nights and weekends while I ran the business during the day. Because it was your job to run the business. It was my job to run the business. Okay. Yeah. And then you got to a certain point and you could just go and fly and do your thing. Absolutely. I waited my turn and then my turn came and I'm like, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has to tell you twice. No way. <laughs> so you went back to school and you, were you working in um, spas and things like that at first? I got a job in a salon first. I actually went for an interview before I even took the state board exam. And she said, oh my gosh, you have so much experience. You're my cup of tea. You're my gal. If you pass the state board, call me. And I called her the next day and said, I passed. And she goes, you're start Tuesday. That's amazing. <laughs> so I was in a salon at first, yes. And this was, I mean, you had kids who were growing up at that point. And I you did. were kind I of had like kids in high school then. I think that there are a lot of women in the 40 Thrive community who get that, who are in that place right now. Right. Who maybe their kids are getting older and they feel like maybe... It's time for them, but they're afraid to do it. So Absolutely. you're a great example of that. I was chomping at the bit. I was ready. I'm like, come on, go to college, Brianne. Come on, Tom, my turn. It's my turn. <laughs> yeah. They say you have three major job changes. Mm -hmm. This is my third. So this is the one that's sticking. Wow. And you're just, you're riding this one all the way to I'm the end. I'm riding it. I'm riding it. Enjoying <laughs> the heck out of it. That's awesome. So you started working in a salon. How mm -hmm. long did you do that? I was in salon for about 10 years. Okay, and then you decided to bring the whole thing home to your... Bring it on home. Yep, bring it on home. All my clients were like, oh, please do that. We really dislike the salon environment. They were uncomfortable with the noise. Mm. 20 women in one place. All the different energies. Right. They just they didn't blend well with what we were trying to achieve in the room that we were in. Right. Interesting. So, so you I, opened it up at home. I opened it. I asked my clients first. I said, hey, what do you guys think? And they're like, we are on it. We are on it. And I said, all right, let's do it. Let's That's do amazing. It. Where do you think your clients, were they all over as far as ages? Or were they also, you know, getting older and just over the fact that they had to share you with other people? At that time, I had clients in every age range. Mm -hmm. Now, after they've been my clients for over 20 years, yeah, I'm picking up younger. But I have every age group, but my gals are older. My gals are 40 and over. Right. My, the bulk of my 20 years and longer clientele. Wow. They look like they're 25. They they're... do. And that's the thing. That's why they're still coming after 20 years. <laughs> it's amazing. So here's a little trivia for those listening. You and I have the exact same model house. Yes. And your, um, this extra room sort of downstairs is your spa or is your salon. Yes. And mine is the 40 Thrive Studio. Absolutely. It was a perfect. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Perfect. It's the best room. Yes, it is. My kids are like, well, why don't, why, why doesn't one of us get that room? I'm like, no, this is my room. It's your room. You know? So when I think about like the she shed and all those things that people are building, like you and I have, we have it made. We have our own she shed. <laughs> this is it. it. It is my happy place. Absolutely. And it's like tucked away from the rest of the house. Yes. I don't have to hear anything. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. So you open up this salon at your house. You're taking in clients. You're always busy. Before we get into the work that you do, there are so many women who will have this career change and they'll start doing this work. They'll get work in a salon. They'll work there for 10 years. Then they'll be like looking for more and more recognition, more and more acknowledgement and social media. And you're not on social media. No, I'm not. You don't even have a website. I don't have time for any of that. I'm so busy. And you are 100% full all the One, time. Five days a week, 100% full. That's fascinating to me because I think there are a lot of people out there who feel like they can't do business unless they're really going to get sucked into all of this technology. What do you think the secret is to your success without ever having to use technology? The secret is the outcome and the connection that you make with your clients. I mean, my clients are my family. Uh, they know they can come and talk and do anything they want with me. They tell me everything, but they see results. And they leave, they all say, oh, I'm so tired. I really didn't want to drive an hour to come see you today. I knew that was going to be in traffic. And they come and they're very agitated. When they leave two to three hours later, they're <laughs> in such a better place that they're like, they forgot about the bad drive in the traffic. Right. And they see the results. And all their friends ask them, what are you using on your skin? What are you doing? Okay, so let's the get into in that. The, the proof's in the pudding. The proof's in the pudding. Do you think when it comes to skincare, it's the products themselves, the number of times that you use the product? Like, what's the secret to having great skin at over 40? 
there's a combination. There's no quick fix. It's not just one thing. If we could just put a product on the skin and bam, have it fixed, wow, that'd be phenomenal. <laughs> I wouldn't have it? any clients, <laughs> but that would be great. Right. I mean, skin has to do with inside and outside. It's what we give it and how it utilizes what we give it it shows on the outside. So if we are very mean to our bodies and we're not healthy or have to take a lot of medications for an illness, our skin shows. It shows the stress. It shows that it's not getting enough nutrients. So we can put product on it and it may make a tiny bit of change, but it's not going to make the entire change that you're looking for. Right. So I look at skincare as it's total wellness. It's your body inside and out. I need to know everything you're taking, doing, eating. So we can put together a plan to make the product that we give you that we're going to put on your skin work the best it can possibly work for you. You could spend thousands and thousands of dollars. And if you're not following some of these things that you're talking about, then it's just you're just covering it up. Absolutely. I have people that come to me all the time. Oh, have you heard about this? This serum, it's $300. What do you think? Well, of course, I've never heard of it. So then I research it. And I, the next time I see that person, I go, oh, no, 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 honey. Just because it's $300 doesn't mean it's going to be the magic pill for you. It doesn't mean it's going to work and do what you want it to do. So then they go, well, oh, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I wish there was a quick fix. There's mm -hmm. not a quick fix. Yeah. There's just not. You have to do the work. You got to put in the time and then you'll see the results. So what are some of the mistakes we're making when it comes to not products, but like what we're putting in our bodies or what we're doing to ourselves. The biggest mistake most women make is over exfoliation of the skin. They think harder, deeper, meaner. It's going to get those wrinkles off and I'm going right. to be a new me. It's going to absolutely <laughs> erase everything I hate about my skin. And voila, I'm going to be 20 again. It's totally, totally incorrect. The more aggressive you are with your exfoliation, the more harm you cause your skin. It can't recoup. So it gets thinner and thinner and it gets more delicate and then it becomes hyper reactive anything you put on it your skin's going to get red irritated blotchy then you're like why is my skin red irritated and blotchy so over exfoliation big big problem in just everywhere right now because everybody can get their hands on pretty aggressive stuff oh yeah that they don't really know how to use right they think if i go i'm just gonna have a laser peel i'm just gonna laser it all off i don't want to have to do the work right let's laser it off <laughs> and then six months later they're like well my skin doesn't look the way I wanted it to look. What happened? What happened? This was supposed to be a, my quick fix. So over exfoliation, big, big, big thing. Not changing your nutrition and just putting on a $300 serum thinking it's going to do the trick. If your body is full of toxicity, mm -hmm. it, you have massive amounts of caffeine, alcohol, sugars, you just have a very poor diet in general. Right. Don't exercise. Don't oxygenate your body. Your cells can't thrive. And all your organs are working so hard just to move you from day to day right. that it ignores the skin. The skin's not getting the nutrients it needs. I so just saw a woman on Facebook who gave up alcohol and sugar and she showed a picture of her before and after. And she looked like she was seriously 15 years younger. Absolutely. It's amazing. And, and it, it, it happens pretty quickly once yeah. you've detoxed the body. The detox is pretty nasty detox coming down off of sugar and any alcohol or caffeine because they're very addictive substances. Mm -hmm. So you feel very ill. It's like flu-like symptoms while you're trying to detox the body. But wow, after a couple weeks of that, somebody will, will look at you and say, wow, are you doing something different? You look great. Right. You'll clear thinking. Your eyes are bright. You sleep better. And then you're like, oh, all right. Well, this is what I got to do. This is step one. Big step, hard step that a lot of people don't want to make is the nutritional changes. Yeah. Well, you know, because... We're human beings, so we're like, tell me what I need to do to have great skin. Oh, nutrition changes and exercise? I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, so then they reject it and then they get more expensive creams. Absolutely. <laughs> and then they come back and then they come to me and they go, all right, I'm starting to see change with the regimen you put me on. I want to see more. I want, they want more. Mm -hmm. it, we all want more. We want more. And I'll, I'll be, go, okay, you ready? You ready? We're going to do this together. It's not just you. I'm in it with you. Right. We're going to be in constant contact. We're going Is to that make what you do? Absolutely. Absolutely. My clients know they can reach out to me seven days a week, and they do. Wow. Whether it's with a question, concern. I have people that call me and say, can I come in? I need, I just want you to look at something on my face. Can you just look at, I'm like, Yep, I got Okay, I live around the corner. Yeah. You may have just created a monster. I know it. I know it. But it's a, I have an open door policy. Everybody knows any issues, any problems, any concerns. You wow. call me. Let's wow. take a look at it. Let's so make you, sure. So you walk them through this detox thing. Are you? Do you eat no sugar, no alcohol, no coffee, or drink? Um, you know, I consume? 
I really don't eat any sugar. I do have one cup of coffee in the morning. I'm not uh -huh. giving that up. I don't care. <laughs> or like my husband says, do you want coffee with your milk? <laughs> so <laughs> I have my one cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. I, I do eat sugar on splurge. If we go to somebody's house, they serve dessert. I'm never rude. I'm going to have some. Right. I may get a headache later, but I'm going to eat it anyway. Yeah, I noticed that too. I actually didn't realize, but I have bouts of vertigo. And when I quit sugar and I would consume some, I would actually get the vertigo again. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a chemical reaction uh -huh. the body has. Yes. I mean, alcohol just turns to sugar anyway. Absolutely. Turns to sugar in the bloodstream. Right? What about dairy? Do you ever recommend? Us older gals don't really have to worry about with our skin. But of course, as you age, you lose the enzyme to break dairy products down. Right. So then if you already have any kind of an IBS or intestinal issue and your body can't break down the milk products, then you have other issues because the skin, everything starts in the gut. Mm -hmm. If your gut is not happy, your skin is not happy. Right. So if you have an issue with dairy, don't drink, don't eat it, don't drink it. That mm -hmm. Your body will tell you if it has an issue breaking it down. Teenagers, that's different. Teenagers, you know, dairy can cause acne. Excessive amounts of dairy can cause acne. So really? that's a different story altogether. But for older gals, we need calcium, right? Mm -hmm. We're losing calcium. Our bodies are not getting enough calcium. Right. So if we cut our dairy out completely and are not getting our calcium in any other way, we don't want to be deficient. We don't want brittle bones. Yeah, there's bone loss and all of that. And and especially women who are postmenopausal. And I mean, I, I went into menopause at 35 because of surgery. So I, you know, words like bone loss came into my life way too early. But it's true if we don't at least take some sort of supplement. But some will argue that food is the best way to get some of these nutrients over the supplements. Do you recommend somebody just take calcium if they're not drinking No, milk? not at all. I always recommend you talk to your doctor first. Yeah. Because if your body doesn't take and use a calcium supplement, you shouldn't even take it. Right. Try to get it from your food. Right. Try. If you don't know what foods are high in calcium, Google it. You could, you could find out anything now yeah. online. Get a list. Keep that list in your kitchen and make sure you eat something from that list every day. Right. Every day. We do need to make sure we get enough calcium. Also, vitamin D. Mm -hmm. We are not, as a society, getting enough vitamin D. We're vitamin D deficient. Mm -hmm. Strong bones. D, our skin, our bones. So... We're not going outside. And when we are, we have sunblock on, which is great because we don't want to get skin cancer. But you need to get at least 15 minutes of sunshine a day, early morning, late afternoon, so your body gets enough D. Right. I do try to, listen, I know that you're not a doctor. You're obviously clearly experienced, but I don't want anyone to take any sort of information as their medical information you should always check with your doctor see there's my disclaimer you can't like Absolutely. email me check or sue me with your doctor but with my kids I sometimes I'll, I'll be like let's get out and go for a walk because I want them to get that sunlight without I feel like sunblock I don't know this is just my feelings but I feel like down the road we're going to realize how much we've been poisoning our bodies with the sunblocks because they have so many chemicals in them Absolutely. And that that's a whole story in itself. Sunblock. There's no reason to go above a 30 or a 50 sunblock. You're adding chemicals. You're adding estrogenics. You're adding, you're, just like you said, really? poisons that the body absorbs. Right. There's no reason. It's You still have to reapply it, even if it's SPF 90, which is right. ridiculous. 30, 50. You still have to reapply after 80 minutes. But you don't want the chemicals. Why should we be applying those chemicals to the body? Right. Do you have brands of sunblock that you recommend to your clients? Absolutely. Color Science Mineral Makeup Company are known for their sunblock products. They're made of minerals, safe enough to put on a baby. No bad ingredients whatsoever. Right. And they come in cream and powder form. So you have different consistencies to choose from. Right. You can have a powder that looks like a foundation powder. You can have a cream that looks like a foundation cream. You can have a waterproof cream. You can dive, swim in the ocean for 80 minutes. So there are safe alternatives to sunblock. Color Science is wonderful. I've been using them and, tell, and all my clients are on Color Science. Mm -hmm. And if not, they better be. Because <laughs> Cause you're coming over to Because check. we're working on your skin and we have to protect it when you're not here. Yes. I don't want you to come with a sunburn because then you're going to get in big trouble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will definitely link to Color Science and, and the products that you're talking about in the show notes so people can go and get them Perfect. themselves. Okay, so let's talk about some of the problem areas that we find. We're going to start top and kind of move our way down. <laughs> so those number 11, as women call them, 
For me, I call it my Harry Potter scar because it's more of a one, <laughs> like a wiggly one than a, an 11. So obviously, we've got some frown lines there. I actually don't care so much about the lines on the sides of my eyes. I feel like they're laugh lines and they're personal. But this one deep line in between my eyebrows, is there anything we can do other than fillers? You have to first find out. Let's see. Is this a hereditary trait? Mm. Does my mom have it? Does my dad have it? Do my aunts and uncles have it? Does anybody else in my family have it? And you're going to look around at the family members and go, oh, wow, I didn't realize. <laughs> look at all those 11s. That all these people in my family, on whether it's mom or dad's side, have, an ele- have a one. <laughs> and then you're going to yeah. go, okay, well, I'm predisposed for that one. Can you make that one less noticeable? Can you minimize the appearance of it? Yes, you can. With the health of your skin. Mm -hmm. Healthy skin is plump, it's hydrated, and it doesn't show the lines and wrinkles as much. Even though they're there, they're plump and they're really nice and cushy and and you can't really tell. So yes, you can minimize even something that you're predisposed with that everybody in your family has. Mm -hmm. We can minimize it. We can make it look less apparent. Can we get rid of it totally? No, because if it's something that's a hereditary trait, even injectables aren't going to get rid of it. Because oh, really? Absolutely. I mean, I had a client who said she was going to get rid of, she did have 11s, and she had had 11s since the time she was a child. Mm-hmm. No injectables will take care of that for her. And the doctor finally told her, I can't help you. That is something that is, you are ingrained in your DNA. Right. Even paralyzing the muscle is not going to get rid of that deep furrow. Anything else he did didn't get rid of the furrow. So she's like, well, I guess I'm stuck with it. So did we minimize it? Absolutely. You know, she comes every four weeks. She's using product. She's having her treatments. So did we minimize it? Yes. The 11s definitely are an expression line, yes. right? Because my we, WTF yeah, look. We want, there you go. Now, we want people to know if we're angry, yeah. sad, happy. Sometimes you can't tell. Right. But we do. I particularly don't mind if people know what kind of mood I'm in. Right. <laughs> I actually did Botox, I think, twice. And the last time was at least eight years ago. I mean, it was a long time ago. It was something I wanted to try out. I look like an angry bird and not like the cute little blue ones, but the red one with the big, (laughs) (laughs) because I already have that sort of like WTF or resting bitch face or whatever you want to call it. And so when you freeze that area, I look like my eyebrows were like really low. Absolutely. I liked that the Harry Potter scar was gone. Right. The trade-off was not worth it. And I tell people all the time, have somebody take a picture of you. If you're going to go and experiment with injectables, I want you to see yourself in a photo and oh. see if you like how your face looks. Do you look angry? Do you look sad? Do you look mad? If you can't make a happy expression when you're in a picture, a family photo, and you just look like you're, you, nobody even knows what's happening with you with your mood that day, you might not want to be doing those injectables. Sometimes right. they get a little bit out of hand and they kind of go crazy. So I always tell my client, have a picture taken of you and make sure you look at that picture and like what you see. Mm-hmm. Before you go to have the... Before and after. If they're going to go for it, yeah. you better have a picture after so you can compare and go, oh, wow. Yeah. Like you said, you didn't like how your face looked. You didn't like how your eyebrows looked lower. Well, you're not allowed to create that happy eyebrow lift right. if the muscle's paralyzed. So yeah, you might not like that right. all the time. And I noticed that even on the side, so if I did try to lift my eyebrows, the wrinkles on the forehead on the sides were like really weird. Yeah, um, absolutely. So yeah, I, I, I wish that I could just be like, oh, I love Botox and <laughs> those things, but it just made me feel not like me. So yeah, that's another topic entirely. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons that when I first met you and you said that, like, no, I don't do those things. And I'm like, okay, we should talk more because and especially working in TV and being around so many people. When I was in my 20s, there was a pretty famous TV host and she was hosting a show. And I said to her, she, I think she was probably 42, 43. And I just said, God, you, you know, we're in the hair and makeup room. I was hanging out with the probably the hair and makeup people because they became my friends at work. And I said, you know, you're just beautiful. It's great. Like, I, I can't imagine you wanting to do anything to your face. And she just looked at me like... Oh, child, (laughs) you know, you're so naive. Now that I'm 48, I'm like, oh, yeah, I get what she was saying. But I, I remember feeling discouraged because she was talking about doing stuff to her face. Yeah, already at that young, I consider that young. Yeah, like 42, 43 is still pretty be stepping into that pool. Right. (laughs) And she's probably now in her 60s. And whoever she does have, she has a good doctor because she doesn't look 
overdone. Right. She's but it's not clear yeah. that she's doing stuff. Probably the rest of the country isn't nearly as fixated on injectables as maybe we are in Los Angeles. You're right. Well, money concerns as well. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not something that they're going to spend their hard-earned money on. And you're absolutely right. That is not something in many, many cultures that is an important part of their life. They're not going to spend their money on that. They're going to spend their money on maybe a trip, maybe something for their children. And their face and their skin is not something that they're really that concerned about. Right. They're just kind of going, they're going day to day, washing with their bar of soap and they're good to go. You know, that's all they need. They're fine. Nobody's ever told them different. You know, their husbands are great with what's going on. You know, they're not spending all that money on that great skincare. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It is not important. I mean, we are definitely a society here where everybody's competing with one another. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to look good all the time. You always think somebody's looking at me. Look at her. Look at them. Even the young moms are all looking at each other going, oh, she haven't done. What does she have? I better have what she's having done because we're going to be at PTA and then I'm going to look old and she's looking young. Right. It's it's a very unhealthy competition. Mm -hmm. Very unhealthy healthy competition. I know someone who started at like 34, she was doing injectables because she said, well, you know, it's better to do them now. So that way people don't see the difference in 10 <laughs> years. I'm like, okay, if, if that's your thing. But what uh, back to I really like the fact that you talk about taking care of your skin. You do use quality products, you just don't go overboard. It's kind of like a balance between accepting what you've been given and trying Absolutely. to make it look the best it can possibly And look. that's it. We have to take what we've got. And there's no reason to make it look the best it can with what we have at our disposal. There's no reason why. But I do have an issue with creating unhealth in the body. We're trying mm-hmm. so hard to rid our body of toxins. So yes, I do have an issue with, you know, introducing toxins voluntarily and consistently on a, you know, whatever, four month basis. Right. Um, and I, my, when my clients do, if they do ask me, I'm very honest with them. I give them lots and lots of data mm-hmm. to go and confirm on their own before they make that decision. Nine out of 10 of them change their mind because they see down the road what would end up happening. Right. And once you start, you really can't stop. Yeah. Because then you have issues with muscle collapse and tissue collapse. Oh. Uh, because, you know, when you paralyze a muscle, what happens to it? It atrophies. Then when you try to reactivate that muscle... It's hard to reactivate muscles in the face. It's hard to exercise muscles in the face. So unless you're going to start on that wagon train and never stop, (laughs) uh, don't start. (laughs) (laughs) That alone just scared me enough to not jump on that train. Okay, so one of the things that was mentioned in the group was rosacea after menopause. Is that something that can be worked with? Rosacea, again, is a hereditary trait depending on your nationality. Okay. Um, It could be dormant. When we're younger, it usually is dormant. We don't usually have a a lot of the signs of rosacea. Uh, And I'm finding that, of course, when we start to see rosacea in menopause is when the women start to get hot, Mm. get hot flashes. Mm -hmm. What happens is the capillaries are there, especially if you have a fair complexion. The capillaries just fill with blood. Right. Then you see that you're like, why is my face so red? Well, because you're hot. Right. You're hot. Your capillaries are filling with blood. Your circulation is different. Your pulse rate is different. So yes, menopause is a trigger for a lot of women. And then they just start to notice their rosacea more because the texture of their skin is changing also because of the hormone change. The drop in hormone has a lot to do with the flushing of the skin, with how the skin retains moisture and, and how it holds on to that collagen and elastin. Is it one of those things that you just deal with it, cover it up, or do you have we, treatments we for that? We can totally treat rosacea, absolutely, because the key to any type of rosacea is keeping it happy, keeping it calm, keeping it quiet, and not letting it erupt, not having a rosacea episode, because there are certain things that really trigger rosacea. Of course, super hot temperatures trigger, right. super cold temperatures, alcohol, caffeine trigger, vasodilators trigger rosacea. Some women in menopause have an alcoholic drink and what happens immediately, they get that flush to the skin. The blood vessels expand, they fill with blood, they get hot. We can control with our diet, again, Mm -hmm. with what we eat and drink and with products. We need to make sure we use products that are calming, soothing, and gentle and that don't aggravate the situation. And do you have specific brands that you use for those products or can people actually go like to their local Walgreens and buy products that you would recommend most people with rosacea really don't have a clue as to what products 
are good and bad right. for their skin type. So basically, if they do go to what, wherever, Walgreens, Target, whatever store they're at, they go and they look and they're like, well, I guess I'll just get something gentle and creamy. <laughs> Which doesn't necessarily mean that the ingredients in that product aren't harmful for your rosacea. It's all about reading ingredients. Right. I mean, the first 10 ingredients are going to be what there's most of in most skincare products. So if you see alcohol, if you see mineral oil, if you see things you can't pronounce mm -hmm. or don't know what they are, right. don't purchase that product. Okay. Because you don't know what it is and you don't know if it's going to aggravate your condition. So I wish I could say, yes, we could go get those products readily. You really need to go be diagnosed mm. by either your doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Dermatologist. Or go to a knowledgeable esthetician. Have a consultation. Have her look at your skin. She's going to, again, a good esthetician will ask you about your diet and lifestyle. Right. Your nationality. And then she will help guide you as to a, a all-around program, topical products, and internal things to do with just your diet. And I never recommend supplementation. But I always say, you know, this would be a great thing to try. Right. See if it makes it better. See if you feel better. Talk to your doctor about it. I mean, are you ill? Are you on medication? A lot of people in menopause end up having irritable bowel, gut issues again, right. which a lot of redness, a lot of rosacea starts in the gut. I wish I could say it didn't, but it all originates from the, the gut. The gut is like responsible for everything. It I mean, behavioral stuff, brain stuff, really, all of it. Oh my gosh, it's a pain in the neck. But boy, we really have to stay diligent and be conscious and be aware if we see signs on our skin search it out why am i getting this why does this look like this right and that's where the products that i recommend osmosis beauty by mm -hmm. dr ben johnson he is the best guy you can listen to his podcasts i mean i have had clients who said i was mesmerized for hours listening to his podcast on gut health Wow. And I said, and did it help you understand what we've been talking about? And they're like, absolutely. I understand now where you were going with why I need to stop eating so much sugar to get rid of my ruddy skin, my rosacea, my candida, my everything that they have going on that they're unhappy with. Right. So yeah, gut health is important. That's everything. What I really love that you have said a couple times is you talk about our nationality. So I'm I'm of Irish descent, mostly. <laughs> I have, I think, 14% Portuguese. But there are so many different, not only skin tones, but things that come with each of our nationalities or our backgrounds. And so is that really an important part of knowing your client, what their background is, so that way you can maybe understand what some of their challenges will be based on that? Absolutely, absolutely. The more melanin anybody has in their skin. So the deeper the skin tone, they do actually have a built-in SPF. Which, oh, really? which can be a good thing and a bad thing. A built-in SPF, people say, well, my skin's really, really dark. I don't get sunburned. But that doesn't mean you can't get damage. See, the fallacy is dark skinned people think they don't need to wear sunblock because they don't get sunburned. They can still get damage to the tissue. They may not see those lines and wrinkles in their 30s, mm -hmm. but in their 40s, 50s, 60s, they're going to see them, and they're going to see them really come quickly because of not protecting the skin, thinking that, that they have this built-in SPF. And they do actually have built-in SPF. The <laughs> lighter the skin tone, the more vulnerable we are, right? right so right. the more we have to protect, which is why lighter skin tone individuals see those wrinkles in their 30s. Right. Because... They have been getting damage as a child. Yeah. I mean, when oh, I was a me. child, we didn't wear sunblock. <laughs> we had tanning contests. Oh, my gosh. So the lighter Baby the skin oil, tone. Baby oil, the tinfoil yes, type thing. All of our little reflective sun tanning lamps that we used oh to sit in gosh, front of in our yes. bedroom. Oh, my gosh. Wait, African-American skin then maybe would not sunburn, so they wouldn't necessarily feel the effects during, but later on, that sun can still be doing just as much Absolutely. Damage. They won't feel like they're getting burned because their skin is actually reflecting the sun's rays. Mm -hmm. So they are reflecting. Again, they can stay out in the sun for a specific amount of time, but they can't stay out, you know, for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours right. without protection, just like anybody else, because right. the damage will still accumulate. It just will show up later in life. Fair, you, when you get a burn, you get, you see it. Oh my God, I'm practically yes. translucent. You for see anyone it who and doesn't you're like, know. oh man, I, oh man, I'm really in trouble yes. now. I always said so, I have two colors, white and red. Which is a godsend, That's believe it. it or not, that you can see yes. that you have damage. You know your skin starts to get hot, starts to get red. You're like, oh, better get out of the sun. Right. If you didn't have that capability where you never felt that uncomfortable 
redness or pinkness from the sun, you're going to stay out there. Stay out there longer and longer because right. you're not uncomfortable. Doing more damage. Right, more damage. Yeah, I heard one time that we get 80% of our sun exposure in the first 18 years of our lives. Probably, absolutely. Yeah, because... So I'm, I'm sort of a lost cause. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all got way too much sun as yes. children. Those of us who have suffered the consequences have those scars around our body from the sun exposure in our youth. Yes. Uh, before we knew any better. One now the, we know better. One of the things that I love about you is I remember being on your table and you're like, okay, have that checked, have that checked, have that checked. Absolutely. You're like, I'm not diagnosing anything, but I think those should be checked by a dermatologist. Right. And then I always say, and then come back and tell me they're nothing. Yeah. And then we'll have a little party. <laughs> you know? But most of my clients say, thank you for sending me. Yes. Thank you for sending me because, you know, a lot of women are coming up with different things they need to have removed because of the sun exposure in their youth. Yes. In their youth. This isn't sun exposure that they've accumulated in their 40s and 50s. Right. It's what happened when they were a teenager. Now we see, now it pops up. And it doesn't have to pop up where you got sunburned. Right. It's going to pop up in a completely oh. different spot. So don't forget to check the areas where the sun doesn't see. Because Interesting. Skin cancer it does not only show up where you got a sunburn. That's a great tip. Yes. I don't think, I didn't necessarily Your hairdresser know that should and... be checking your scalp. Mm -hmm. You should be checking when you're putting your lotion on at night, your feet, your toes, you know, everywhere should be checked. Yeah, I know when I've gone to the dermatologist, they're like checking in my hair, they're checking between my toes. Absolutely. They're like yeah. very thorough. You're it's like, a what's little happening awkward. down there? Yeah. I didn't get yeah. sun down there. <laughs> I didn't wax my feet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's awkward. Um, okay, so let's get back to the face. Um, we talked about the number 11. We talked about the rosacea. Okay, so my weight has fluctuated. And over the past year, I've drop some weight. I know you're looking good. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> and what I noticed along with that is my little turkey neck <laughs> is getting more prominent as I lose weight. And so you know what I'm talking about. I do. It, I do. What I do, do we do with that? Well, again, let's talk about how much are we in the car driving with the sun shining on our neck and our chest? Mm. Our front windshield is not tinted. Right. So Sometimes people will put their sunblock on. They say, well, it's in my foundation. I don't need to put any more on. It's in my foundation. Well, they're not taking that foundation down their neck and their chest. So how much sun exposure is your neck and your chest getting on a daily basis without protection? Right. Okay. Weight loss, absolutely. The skin had been stretched for a while, mm -hmm. right? So then it goes down. So are we able to get that elasticity back? To a point, absolutely we can. Again, we can get that skin healthy. Right. And then we can get it a little firmer. We can minimize the appearance of those lines and wrinkles and make it look better. Absolutely. The skin, you know, we don't know how much elasticity we can get back. Right. Because, of course, that also depends on your age and your health. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're, if you're super healthy and your skin has that capability to build back some of that elasticity, we'll get your neck looking really great. So, again, we have to think about on a daily basis, how much sun is my neck getting exposed to? Mm -hmm. Am I keeping it moist, protected? And am I giving it a lovely little rub and massage while I am putting my night cream on at night? You know, uh, circulation is important to the health of the skin, even on the neck and chest. People kind of sometimes forget. Yes. I'm tired. I don't want to <laughs> do I just want to go to bed. I don't want to do it. Nighttime is so important. That's when our skin it regenerates itself and heals. So that nighttime is when people like to skip. And how many times do you see a woman and you're like, wow, she looks like she's in her 30s. And then you see her neck <laughs> and her chest and you're like, oh, no, she's not. Absolutely. <laughs> because your we pay so much attention <laughs> to our face. Yes. You're, yeah, because your doctors, neck and your hands, absolutely. they neck, tell everything. hands and chest. The doctor yeah. goes, whoa, your face looks like you're 30. The rest <laughs> looks like you're about 80. So what's going on there? The leather handbag is what we used to call it, right? Right, right. How come your chest looks like a leather handbag? Are you a side sleeper? If you're a side sleeper and your skin is folded and pushed while you're sleeping, oh. right? Again, same thing with the lines on your side of your face. Are you a side sleeper? Your face is getting smashed up right. throughout the night. So many people are like, well, oh, man, I'm going to switch to a back sleeper now. I'm going to get rid of all those wrinkles. So th there's a lot of things that come into play when we're talking about neck wrinkles, chest mm. wrinkles, wrinkles on the face, other than 
are we predisposed? Is it something I've caused? Is my health, you know, poor? I mean, we have kids in sports. Are we outside at their sporting events right. for hours right. on the weekends? Well, and also think about your phone, right? The way people are holding their necks. Yes. I'm guilty of that. And your phone in front of you, like you're constantly creating those wrinkles and that fold in your neck. Absolutely. So again, it's repetition, right? Yeah. It's a repetition of a movement even if it's just to lower the head to look yeah. at your iPad or your phone. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So what do we do? Yeah, what are we all going to do? Like <laughs> selfie sticks? Are there products specifically that will help with this You know, there thing? are some products on the market that claim to be just for the neck, just for the neck, just for the neck. There's no reason really why we need... I mean, some of them are wonderful, but if you're using appropriate creams and serums on your face, those should be taken down to your neck and chest and should do the trick for you, mm. right? So the, And those products should be applied twice a day every day in okay. combination with your sunblock so yes there's absolute products that will repair damaged dna wow they'll repair they'll regenerate does it happen in one day absolutely not <laughs> how long does it take on, on um, average i always I know tell my clients different. when you take a new supplement don't you or aren't you told by your doctor give it three months mm -hmm. give it three months to accumulate in the body same thing with any topical product change you're going to see change in way less than three months. But I always say, give it three months before we make a change and make see if it's working for you. Right. Three months. Hard for people to wait three months sometimes because, again, we are that instant gratification oh, society. Sure Man, I want it <laughs> now. I wanted it yesterday, but I'll settle for today kind of a thing. Right. So you have to give it time. And, again, do the work. You have to be willing to do the work. Yeah. And so is it the same advice for that turkey neck as it is for the wrinkly chest as yes. well? Yes. Absolutely. Because it, it's definitely different skin than on our face. Yes. Because we don't have a lot of oil glands on the neck and chest. So actually, that's why we see a little more wrinkles. There's oh. no oil glands, right? There are minimal where the hair follicles are because mm -hmm. we do have little teeny tiny little baby hairs everywhere and, and oil does travel up the hair to hydrate the skin. But we have less than on the face, which is why sometimes we see that neck and we go, what in the world is going on with that? So we do need to give it more TLC, right? So d be super diligent with your sunblock and your lotions and creams and anti-aging serums right. because it does need a little more assistance than the face. Right. Well, that makes sense. That was the thing when I met you and like your chest looks like you are like 30 years old. <laughs> and so let's talk about sort of, I don't want to say procedures, but you do a lot of different treatments. Yes. So it's not just the products. Like what are some of the things that you do for somebody who has a chest that maybe looks like mine. <laughs> I do a lot of LED light emitting diode treatments on people for every skin problem, whether it's acne, anti-aging, because it's such a healing modality that can cause no harm. It's safe. It doesn't burn the skin. It doesn't fry the skin, but it allows the skin to regenerate itself. Mm. It allows rosacea to calm and heal. It allows skin that's lacking in elasticity to take those light emitting diodes utilize them like nutrition, like food, food for the skin. So most of my clients, 40 and over, mm -hmm. are doing the LED light emitting diodes. We're doing microcurrent. So we are exercising the facial muscles and the neck muscles with microcurrent technology. Mm. We're giving it some help. It's like lifting weights for your face. Right. <laughs> Without having to actually get up. Absolutely. <laughs> you can take a nap while I'm doing it. Perfect. So is this one of those things that people can get at other salons and spas? Absolutely. Or are there things they should look for? Make sure that the, the person who's doing it is skilled. Any warnings? Yes. If people are out searching, you know, first, of course, if they don't already have a salon that they're visiting and they want to start calling or asking friends if they have a salon that they love and a person that they love, always go and talk to the esthetician and have a consultation. Ask her how many years she's been performing microcurrent or light therapy. Look at the tools that she's using to perform that procedure. Go home, mm -hmm. research her equipment. See if you like the company. See if it's a reputable company. If she's only been doing microcurrent, well, I just got certified and I've been doing it for a couple of weeks. Don't be her guinea pig. <laughs> yeah. Don't be her guinea pig. Wait until she's got enough hours under her belt where she's confident in her craft. I tell people all the time, don't just book something. 
Don't use a Groupon and just book something because it's cheap. Right. Cheap doesn't always mean you're going to get a good treatment. Right. Cheap means you may come out of there and go, what in the world was that? <laughs> well, is there a risk of damage or danger yes. if they don't know what they're doing? Well, they shouldn't be getting equipment that's strong enough to cause damage. Okay. You might not get the results that you should be getting. I see. So you might not get an appropriate treatment, especially if they're positioning the microcurrent the wrong way on the muscle tissue. Mm-hmm. So we, we want it with that muscle tissue up, 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 up. We don't want it sagging. So you don't want to work the muscle in the incorrect manner. Right. So that's where their experience comes into play. They kind of need to know how to place the instrument and for how long. So you really can't cause harm, harm, like you can't burn anybody, you can't cut anybody, because we are not allowed to have any equipment that can do that. Right. And estheticians should not have that equipment that, they, <laughs> that you can harm anybody with. So research your person you're going to go to. Ask your friends for recommendations. Say, do you love that person? Do you love that person as an individual? Mm-hmm. You know, does she have a good energy? Is her facility clean? Right. Super important, everybody. Clean facility. Go there. Look around the facility. Ask for a tour. If they tell you no, get out. Don't go there. (laughs) That's a that's a red flag right there. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. So for the women out there who are listening and they're like, maybe they just want to improve their skin. They're not necessarily looking to go do the procedures or they don't live near you and can't have all your miraculous work, but they want to have a really positive daily routine for skin that's over 40. What are some of the things we should be doing? And again, products I can put in the show notes, but specifically like what are we doing in the morning? What are we doing in the evening? Um, What kinds of of things are we doing? Right. Well, you definitely want to make sure you cleanse the skin twice a day every day with a cleanser appropriate for your skin type. Okay. Uh, You know, some people say, well, I think I have oily skin. I'm going to go get a benzoyl peroxide product. Oh my goodness gracious. (laughs) What are you talking about? Skin can be what's called oily dry. If you are dehydrating your skin so extremely over the top, it's going to be producing more and more oil to make up for what you're taking away. And it's going to be so confused. So appropriate cleanser for your skin type twice a day, every day. Your evening cleanse, you should be washing your face twice especially if you're wearing makeup and especially if you're wearing minerals. Remember, minerals are meant to stay put in water. So if you are only washing your face one time in the evening and you have mineral makeup or mineral SPF on, you're not even getting all the minerals off. Right. So if you, after that, are putting on a serum, it's on top of junk that you left on your face. Right. So So you're like sealing it in. (laughs) Sealing it in. So cleanse the skin twice in the evening. That first cleanse is going to loosen up all that makeup and debris. The second cleanse is going to cleanse and nurture the skin. That way when you start your serums, it's actually going to get utilized and just really sucked up in the skin. And that's what you want. You don't want any kind of serums that sit on the top of the skin. You want something that you rub in and it is absorbed. Right. Then you know the skin is using it and it's not just sitting on the top. Right. It's sitting on the top, don't use it. It's not going to do anything for you. And what are these serums called? Like as far as what types of serums are um, they? Well, I mean, osmosis has wonderful, wonderful serums for anti-aging and DNA repair. So again, it depends on what your issue is, your age. Mm-hmm. So there are stem factor DNA serums. It's a Catalyst Plus AC11 repair vitamin C serum that deals with capillaries, right? Mm calming the capillaries, soothing the capillaries, healing those capillaries, large pores. As we age, we get large pores. Why? Because the elasticity is collapsing. What happens? It's like a bricks and mortar. Our skin when we're early 20, 30s is like a solid block wall. It looks lovely. As we age, the mortar starts to fall out of the brick wall. What happens is the skin starts to collapse. That's when we start to see those lines and the large pores. Right. So we have to shore it back up. We got to put some more mortar in there. How do we do that? With your skincare routine, Mm -hmm. with your serums, with your anti-aging serums, your DNA repair serums, and then your protective serums. Protective in a sense that we want your skin to be healthy. So when we do go outside and we are in the sun, that it is capable of protecting itself and not being damaged the whole time we're outside. Right. Because if your skin is vulnerable, you are going to age faster because it can't protect itself. Right. Okay. 
So how many steps do we have going on at night then? Oh my, depending on what you have <laughs> going on, really you should only have three. Okay. You should have your cleanse. Mm -hmm. You should have your serum. Now, if you have to use two or three serums, some of them can be at, mixed together in your hand. Osmosis, there's only one serum that has to be on the skin alone, and it's called Stem Factor. Wonderful. Everybody under the planet should have that serum. Oh, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Even clients who say, well, I only want to get that one serum. I don't want to spend the money on anything else. And I go, great. That's the one, right? They come back in a couple of weeks and go, all right, give them all to me. I want them. I want them all. Oh my gosh. I'm seeing such awesome change to the skin. And I'm like, that's it. Exactly. You want to see change. Right. You want to see things change for the better. So what your routine should be, you cleanse, you use your serum, depending on what you have going on. If we're trying to heal something, if you have a really bad rosacea issue, you may need two, three serums because okay. you need a healing serum, a you know, calming serum. Osmosis, there's only the stem factor by itself, the other serums can all be mixed together. Okay. When you say by itself, do you mean that you should not put on any other serums at all or that you can't mix them in your hand? You cannot mix them together. It okay. always has to go on the skin first and then your other serums go on top. Right. Then from that point on, that's when we're going to customize what you need. I see. That's where your esthetician says, okay, you have rosacea. Let's make sure you're on a serum to calm those capillaries down. Right. Shrink them up, calm them down, make them happy keep them happy so you don't have those flare-ups of redness. Right. And those flare-ups, as far as the capillaries go, are very different from broken capillaries. Absolutely. Because I've got broken ones yes. all around my nose yes. from, I mean, and I've actually had them lasered before to, so I wouldn't have such a, I, I, my Ted Kennedy face, as I like to say, <laughs> but then I would blow my nose and they just break again. Yes. They're, they're, if you have I'm any kind sensitive. of allergies and yeah. you're touching your nose, Yes, capillaries actually have a job. What's their job? Is to move fluid, to circulate, right? So the reason why we get those capillaries back is because we still need to circulate. We still need to circulate blood, lymph. You know, its job is to remove toxicity, get it out, flush it out. So when we, we keep going, laser, laser, blast them, get them off, get them off. I don't like the redness. They're going to come back because, again, your skin's like, but we have to circulate the blood. We have to circulate the blood. So, and again, capillaries around the nose, yeah. again, that's actually your colon that's your colon telling you, I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy, unhappy. Really? So again, we're talking about that darn gut and everything that's going on there. You know, for people who have digestive issues, again, those capillaries right around the nasal fold there. Why? I don't have allergies. Why am I getting those? Let's go back and look at that gut again. Let's see what we're wow. giving it. See the if capillaries it's tell capillaries. the story. Capillaries. <laughs> if you know how to read them, they can talk to you real nice. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the morning routine. What does that include? Morning routine. People say, well, why should I wash my face in the morning? I just washed it before I went to bed. I didn't get dirty. Well, you're shedding dead skin cells. You have hair product in your hair. You're laying all in it on the pillowcase so yes you do have to wash your face in the morning just one nice gentle cleanse and then you have to reapply your serums before you apply your foundation if that's what you're choosing to do and mm -hmm. then always your spf always okay. always your spf so people say well you know i use spf it's in my foundation let's say and i go great are you reapplying your foundation after 80 <laughs> minutes and they go, what are you talking about i go you know those little brown spots that you're calling freckles on your face are sun damage because again you're starting off with wonderful spf protection after an hour or two the skin gets warm and toasty that product moves and separates you have gaps in your spf protection oh, okay so Again, that's why they say reapply, reapply. Most of us gals do not reapply if our SPF is in our moisturizer or right. our foundation. Right. How, we're not reapplying that every hour. Right. But even if we have makeup on, we're not necessarily re reapplying on You're our face. You're not reapplying. So again, you, we have gaps. We have some protection, mm -hmm. but we still have gaps in that protection. Right. Okay. So we're washing, mm -hmm. we're doing the serums, and then we're re doing the sunblock out or the sun protection outside of our makeup. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. People say, I'm going to put my makeup on, I'm going to put my foundation on. It has SPF 15. And I said, you still need to put your color science powder on top of that. Well, why? Again, powder is not going to move. It's not going to separate. Your creams are going to separate. And does the powder have an SPF in it? 30 and 50. Oh, Absolutely. Excellent. So use that as your setting powder. Mm -hmm. Use that as your makeup routine, as your setting powder. That's going to help keep your SPF intact so oh, it doesn't separate brilliant. and move. Mm -hmm. You are so smart. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, you know, there are, 
because your background is the fitness space and you still teach Pilates yes, and things uh-huh. like that. I don't know about you because you're not on the internet necessarily, <laughs> but there are so many people out there who call themselves like wellness experts right. and fitness experts. The same thing with the skincare world. You right. know, there's so many lines out there now that somebody can sign up, whether it's multi-level marketing or whatever. Do you feel like that's going to replace this professional advice that you're giving. What do you think of of that stuff out there? They're trying to replace us. The problem is they can't because all the products and all the multi-level marketing, anybody can get their hands on it and sell it, which means nobody's getting products that are appropriate for their skin. So they're not going to get the right outcome. So they may purchase that product for a couple months. They may get their auto ship, but then they don't want it anymore because it's not working. Right. If you don't get your products professionally prescribed, how do you know it's the appropriate product for you? So those in our community, our skincare community, are in constant complaint to uh, the higher ups, all the companies that we deal with, you know, what is going on in our industry? You know, those of us that are our professional, that keep our license intact. I take so many classes every year just to stay on top of this skincare game because it's constantly evolving and changing. And I need to know if somebody comes to me with a question, my gosh, I need to find out what the heck's going on. So all of these multi-level, all of this other, these brands that are popping out, uh, most of their ingredients are harmful because they have a really long shelf life and because anybody can buy them. So the the ingredients that are going to make the change or at the bottom of the chain. They're at the bottom of the list. Because if it was at the top and somebody could burn themselves with it, they could get in trouble and get sued. So most of their ingredients are benign, not, not meaning benign in a sense where it won't hurt you. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of preservatives, alcohols, you know, things that aren't real good for the skin. Right. So that's what people don't, you know. And if you're not using anything at all in your skin and you go to one of these parties and your friend says, you've got to use this. This is great stuff. And you start using it and you've been using just like, say, a bar of soap in the shower. Well, you're going to see a little bit of change because you're using something else on the skin. Right. That is better than what you were using. Right. So it's not going to replace us because our industry is going to make sure that it's not. Our clients are still going to want to see change. They want to see results. Yeah. So they're always going to come back to us. They're always going to come back to that professional product that is prescribed just for them and what they have going on. And they know they can always come back to us because, you know, we change. Our bodies change. Our age changes. The seasons change. Don't you want to have somebody you can constantly be asking, do we need to change something? And it's yes. It's really the difference between, you know, working out at home by yourself Absolutely. and having a trainer who will teach you how to do something correctly. Right. Avoid injury. Again, don't hurt you, yourself. You yes. can still hurt your skin on your own. You can. Right. How does someone know whether if they want to go in that direction, the MLMs or whatever, and buy skincare products from a consultant, how do they know if it's doing damage if they don't have a reaction right away? Right. Uh, And they won't have a reaction right away. Um, Because what's going to happen is they'll use that product for a couple months. And then their skin's going to start to become what again, hyper reactive, meaning all of a sudden, it's going to get red for no reason. Why is my skin red? Why is it blotchy? Why is it itchy? Why do I have this dry patch over here? So it's damaged the skin after time, Mm -hmm. with time of using that product. It's damaged it enough to where now it's going to let you know, I don't like this. I don't like this product. So at first, it's going to be all hunky-dory. Everything's going to be great. Oh, this is great. Feels good. Smells good. You know, six months down the line, stuff's going to start to pop up. They're not going to know what it is. So that particular salesperson who sold them that product, well, let's put you on this other stuff right here. Now I need this one. Now you got pimples. We better put you on this. Well, no, 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 no. Why is your skin reactive? What's it reacting to? But they don't know what it's reacting to because they haven't been to school. They're not a licensed professional. Now, not to say that people in my industry, even though they have their license, know their stuff. People in my industry, a lot of times, don't continue their education. They don't stay up on all the technologies and products and ingredients. Shame on them. Shame on them. Their clientele will come and go because they won't be able to get the results that they're looking for. So they'll bounce. They'll come and go, come and go. So it's hard. There's no way um, to police that. Mm. With salons and day spas, it's up to, you know, whoever the manager there is to check their background and their experience and make sure that they keep 
their education updated. Right. So that definitely makes me sad in my industry is that nobody, they don't want to spend the time or the money to update their education and stay current. It's very important. It's so important. So if you're licensed, you never have to go back and take more tests to be like no. up your license or anything no. like that. We do have to renew our license every year, but you you only do that just online. You just send write a check. Just send yeah. the money. <laughs> send the money. Yeah, they don't care they about don't, education. No, they don't ask for it, continuing education credits. Right. But I, I think that they should. Should, but yeah. that's just me um, because I think it's very important. And my clients say to me all the time, you know, we stay with you because we know you take class because you come back so energized and so excited about what you've learned right. that we benefit from all the stuff that you're learning. And it keeps all of us excited because yes, we can help. We can help each other. We can help ourselves. That's great. And I think that, you know, just encouraging people to go out and talk to the esthetician before they let them touch their Absolutely. face and their body. You had mentioned when you walked in about some like feminine areas <laughs> and products and things that you were... So t talk to me about this world. <laughs> yeah. Nellie DeVoist is in Canada and uh, she is a wonderful educator. Their classes are great. She has a whole feminine hygiene line uh, for all ages. Now, those of us in menopause know we have a lot of stuff going on or not going on right. in the feminine area. So she has a three-day yeast cleanse product. Everything is natural, eco-cert, organic, gluten-free, completely natural. So if you have menopausal issues, we can fix that. We can regenerate tissue in the feminine area, believe it or not. Wow. We can calm down irritation, itching, delicate skin, thinning skin. There's something for everything right? Wow. We all have issues. We're all having issues. Nobody talks about them. Let's talk about them. Let's get it out in the open. You're yes. not the only one having those problems. If you know you're not the only one having those problems, what a comfort that is. You're like, I thought it was just me. Right. My husband says it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't they fix you? <laughs> right. Where else is he going that he thinks it's just you? <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it's really important to talk about this stuff, too, because especially after menopause and some of the challenges, and I've mentioned a few things on the show before, but are you talking about products alone or treatments also that you do? This is product alone. Okay. So these product are products on. that you encourage. Absolutely. Women take them home and they care for their bodies themselves in the comfort of their own home. Nice. So, but there's a little test kit that we can test your pH. Most people don't think about their pH. Mm -hmm. You know, most, most people, people don't know what their pH is. They have is. no idea what I the just, You know, you hear a commercial, your pH, pH balance. PH, what does that like, mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? Are you talking about pH water? Are you talking about... No, your pH and your vaginal area needs to be a specific number. If it's too high, you could have mold growing, believe it or not. And not even know it, which is why, I had no again, idea. <laughs> you could feel ill. Right. Because if your pH is out in one area, pH is out everywhere. So again, we need to heal parts of our body, all parts of our body. And they you can do a connect. test? You can yes. do a test at home? Yes, we have a little, I have a little pH strip test that you can take home and, and I'll explain to you how to do it. You can do it in my office uh, without me there, of course. I'll step <laughs> out. I'll explain to you how to do it and step out. And then we can help guide you to what products you need once we know what your pH is. Oh, that's cool. If your so, pH is awesome, you have no problems other than maybe a few things that are bothering you, then we'll guide you towards those couple products that will help you with your issue for, for whatever's going on. And for those who aren't in our area, they can go on there, maybe on their website and get absolutely. the pH kit. Absolutely. I'll yeah. include that in the show notes absolutely. as well. Absolutely. It's going to be a jam-packed show jam notes. Jam-packed, baby. <laughs> Lots of links in this Oh, episode. so much homework. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is amazing because I can't say enough how just getting started with you, where you go into nutrition and exercise and lifestyle and all of that first and foremost. And it's not like magical serums and magical this and that. Like I think we need to take responsibility. Self-care is not just like getting your nails done and be, you know getting some grooming. It's really making choices that ultimately will keep you in better health and looking better down the road. And so I love that you take a holistic approach to all of this skin stuff. And it's not just like slap on a few serums and inject a few needles. <laughs> yeah, because you know, down the line, it's not going to stay. It's not going to hold. You're going to say, okay, now it looks like it did, you know, eight months ago. What's going on? Uh-uh. We're, even though we're getting older, let's not look like we're getting older. Let's right. not feel like we're getting older. We do have to take responsibility and we do have to, our body is one large vessel with lots of working parts and we have to know how to, um, look at the signals it gives us that mm -hmm. it's unhappy with us. 
And it, our body does give us signals, yes. but you have to pay attention to those signals because if you don't, it's going to make you sick. So you have to pay attention to the signal. And I think sometimes we don't pay attention to the signal until it's too late. Absolutely. And then we have to go get medication. Yes, which makes it uh, everything worse. Right. Then it's a snowball rolling down the hill. You're just, oh, great. Everything's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just appreciate your expertise. And I'll, like I said, I'll have lots and lots of links in the show Perfect. notes. I have one more question. Fire away. 40 Thrive is a community for women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, beyond. A lot of people think it's just like, if I'm 40, you know, because I'll say to somebody, oh, join my community. And they're like, well, I'm 60. Well, then you're then you're in because you're go. over 40. That's right. But I like to ask each of my guests on the show, what does it mean to you to 40 Thrive? Well, I'm actually 60 thriving. What it means to me is take control. Take control of how you want your future to be, how you want your body to feel, how you want your 40s to be, your 50s to be, and your 60s to be. Nice. Do you want people to look at you and go, oh my God, you're 60? Yeah, I'm 60 and I'm <laughs> celebrating that I'm 60 because yes. I feel fantastic. But you have to take control. Right. You're the only one. Nobody's going to do it for you. You have to take control of your life and your health yourself so you can be of better assistance to others, which is a mantra I say to myself daily. I ask the universe to heal me so that I may be of greater assistance in helping to heal others, whether it's just with their skin, to make them feel wonderful in that hour they're with me and my hands are on them. And they leave and they're floating away and they're like, that's just what I needed. I just right. needed you to touch me. Some of my clients say, you know, you're the only person who touches me once a month when I come see you. Wow. They appreciate just my touch. Yeah. Their hand massage, their face massage. Self-care. That yeah. is their self-care. So let's control our lives. Let's control our destiny. Let's take charge. 40 Thrive. Let's go. That's awesome. Oh, my God. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I told you Kathleen's amazing, right? If you'd like to contact Kathleen directly, check out the show notes, 40thrive.com forward slash episode 33. I also have tons of links and information in there so you can get started and have the best skin ever. Thank you so much for listening. Hit that subscribe button so you never have to search for another episode again. And if you feel inspired, I would love for you to rate and review the podcast on your favorite podcast app. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Until next time, take care and keep thriving. Uh-huh.